Hey guys, before I get into this video, Sedona and I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who continues to leave nice and supporting comments in my videos. I wish I could respond to all of you guys, but there's just so many. I did want to say that I do read through most of them from the bottom of both our hearts. Thank you. Sedona, you want to say thank you? Do you have anything to say? No? Okay. So I've noticed comments of people saying they still don't fully understand what a quadriplegic is. If you don't know my story, I'll leave a link to the video at the end of this one and you can check it out. The quick version is I broke my neck at the beach when I was 15 years old. I was paralyzed instantly from my neck down. My official diagnosis is a incomplete C4 quadriplegic. I did not understand anything in the paralyzed slash wheelchair world until I was thrown into it. I never thought anything like this would happen to me. It's been eight years since I've been paralyzed and I still learn new things. So in this video, I wanna do my best as a quadriplegic to explain what a quadriplegic is. Damage to your spinal cord is what paralyzes you. So you can break your back or your neck without getting paralyzed. When damage is done to your spinal cord, that is when you lose function in the body. Depending on the amount of damage done to your spinal cord will determine how much function you will lose. I've heard people say that they know a quadriplegic who has more function than I have. I've also heard other people say they know a quadriplegic who can't move anything from their neck down. So how am I a quadriplegic? The reason you can see a quadriplegic that has function or movement such as me versus someone who is completely paralyzed from their neck down is because each injury or illness is different. You can still be a quadriplegic and have different function depending on the level of your injury and how much damage you did to your spinal cord. There are seven vertebrae in your neck, C1 through seven. One starting up here, counting down to seven, goes to the bottom of your neck. Depending on which level you break will determine which function you lose. Each level is a different function in your body. One being the worst. If you break C1, C1 through C3 control your breathing, the way you can turn your head side to side, up and down. Technically, if you break C1, you are internally decapitated, but you can still live. It's crazy. For me, I shattered my C4 vertebrae. My spinal cord damage also occurred behind my C4 vertebrae. So I lost all the function from C4 and down. For example, if I would have broke C5 or C6, I would have most likely still had wrist function. As a C4, I have no control of my wrist or my fingers. Usually a lot of people who are C5 or C6, they can bend their wrist up like this. So that would be called tenodesis. But for me, being a C4, incomplete, I have nothing. No, no wrist or finger function. It may look like it, but I'm just kind of moving my arm to make my wrist move. If you ask me to lift my wrist up to the ceiling, I can't do that. If I broke C2 or C3, I would most likely have to be on a ventilator because I would not be able to breathe on my own. My respiratory system would most likely be paralyzed. Again, these are all general because you can break a vertebrae in your neck at a certain level, but have damage at a different level. It also depends on how bad the damage is to your spinal cord. If you slightly damage your spinal cord, you may still be able to send signals through your body telling it to move. So if someone both breaks the same level, say C5, but one breaks it worse than the other, the two of them can have completely different function, even though they're the same level. A lot of people who are paralyzed also lose their feeling. And again, this depends on the level of injury and how bad the spinal cord was damaged. For me personally, I'm very lucky. My spinal cord was not severed. I actually have great feeling. Losing feeling in your body is a lot more dangerous than you probably realize. I've heard crazy stories of people who broke their bones, broke a leg, and had no idea their leg was broken. People have gotten burned super bad from just using a heat pad and forgetting how hot it is or barbecuing and their leg is rested against the barbecue burning and they don't even know. Since my accident, my body also does not sweat. My body does not know how to regulate temperature. If I go outside when it's 110 degrees and sit in the sun, my body will heat up, my skin will start to get red, and I can eventually pass out from heat stroke. And that's the same thing with cold weather. If it's super cold outside and I'm exposed to the cold for a long period of time, my body will basically tense up and almost kind of like freeze in a position. And it's, it makes it harder for me to move because my muscles get so tight and tense, I can't move as I normally can. But as I said earlier, I'm an incomplete C4 quadriplegic. There's also 
people who are called a complete injury. The difference between an incomplete and a complete is this. If someone's an incomplete quadriplegic, that means they have some function below the level of where they broke. I'm a C4, that's somewhere up in my neck. I have function, I can move my arms, but that's about it. If someone is a C4 complete quadriplegic, that means they have no function below the level of their injury. So that is why you may see a quadriplegic who's just sitting there and can't move anything but their head or eyes. They are diagnosed as a complete versus me, who is an incomplete. I still have function below the level of my injury. I hope that made sense. So like I said, I also I have function in my arms, my forearms, my triceps, biceps, but this is the highest I can lift my arm above my head and then it just stops. This is one thing I wish other people could experience is what it's like to be paralyzed because you can't you can't show someone how to be paralyzed. But I did find this really cool exercise I actually want to show you guys. I've used it a couple times. I've done some public speaking. I'm going to hold this diagram up to the camera and if you guys want to look at it over you can just pause it once I hold it up. After I hold it up I'm going to explain how to do it. So this is the best way I can describe what it's like to be paralyzed. If you wanna make a fist with your hand, I can't really do that, but just make a fist with your hand and then you're gonna set it on your leg. And make sure you're sitting down, don't try to do this standing up, just get in like seated position and make a fist and rest it on your thigh. Then stick out your ring finger. Once your ring finger is stuck out, with the ball of your fist, push your fist down into your leg. Not your finger, just with your finger out and your hand in a fist, push into your leg, down. Then while you're pushing down into your leg, try and lift your ring finger up off your leg. If you're doing it right, it should be really hard. It's still, you're setting the signal from your brain to your finger to lift it up off your leg, but while you're pushing your hand down, you can't do that. That's what it's like for a lot of quadriplegics or people who are paralyzed, you know, you tell your body, to move your leg or to move your hand or your wrist and nothing happens. It's not something we're faking, you know, it really is something we can't control. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. Well, maybe you have a better understanding of what a quadriplegic is. That was the goal of this video. So I hope you guys at least learned something. Again, I just want to say thank you for everyone who watches my videos and continues to support me. It really means a lot. Have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Say goodbye.